Oh, there you are. I was hoping you'd make it. Come in, sit down. Welcome to the story well. If you've found your way here, then here is where you belong. Joining me at the table is a Mr. Rob Cabasco. Why, hello, sir. Thank you much for doing this. I am pleased to be here. So, in your previous life... Yes. You were involved in politics. Oh, yes, I was. I'm curious, what role do you think storytelling played in your political life? Oh, it is. Well, in, in political life, it's 100%. It's all storytelling. It, it's and, and by the way, usually it's a very bad story. <laughs> your opponent's a very bad story, the villain. Yeah. Your story is obviously a very good story. But I think that's all it is, especially today. I mean, yeah. that's all they're doing is they're just writing it ad hoc, chapter by chapter, hoping that enough people will tune in who either like the story or hate the story. That's the interesting thing. People who hate the story will tune in more. When you were doing social media stuff for them, would you get sort of this is the story we're doing or is it your job to sort of follow along? This is well, how we want things to be portrayed. I mean, I guess, you know, how much of it sort of came down as this is what the brand is. Oh, I think everyone, I think in politics, no matter what campaign it is, whether it's like city council all the way to president, yeah. you all know what the boss, i.e. the candidate, yeah. what the story is. Where you get in trouble is if you go off script. Like if you go off script, <laughs> then that's the problem. But now, now then again, today, it doesn't seem like there is a script. So True. you True. can, um, the more off script, the better, because now it's the diversion. It's the diversion from reality. It's the diversion from what is actually happening. You go, and this is where we are now, you yeah. go further off script, uh, it's just more noise. And people like that. <laughs> and, but it wasn't like that back in your day? Is that what no, you it was the same thing. <laughs> I've told the story. I've told, I've told the story is that um, there was when I was, I was, and I can say this, I worked on McCain, the McCain presidential mm -hmm. campaign. Sure. Uh, this is this was story was published in a book. Uh, there was one day we were getting ready for a convention and uh, we needed to create a the, the policy document. What is this campaign about? Oh, and I had decided we were going to make this really cool and format it. And the person who was the political director at the time, I go in their office. They were they were younger than me. Sure, tells you something about politics. Yeah, and he goes, I don't care. And he reached over and reached over, and got a phone book, and he goes, You can put whatever cover you want on the front and the back. I just want people to wave this in front of the cameras. <laughs> he goes, If you have to, if you have to quadruple space it. <laughs> And have six inch margins. I don't care. It just has to look like something. And I went, oh, okay. <laughs> this this might be the beginning of the end of my days in politics. Wow. Yeah. Because it is. That's part of the it's story. It's theater. It's theater. Yeah. It absolutely is. More so now than ever. So that that document that had to be created, mm -hmm. now that where does that originate? And then does it go through like a lot of different hands before it finally ends up as whatever goes out to the no, media. No, like normally in a campaign, like so like in a presidential campaign, a national yeah. campaign, you'd have a policy director who would basically do a draft. And I'm sure today it's similar, if not even more contracted. Yeah. If you're running for mayor, city council, or school board, you're probably there late at night writing a two-page summary of what it is you're about. Maybe you're not even doing that. Maybe you're just saying, damn it, I want to be in this big seat and I just want to do stuff. And <laughs> We're not using chat GPT to write it. I mean, good Lord, yes. <laughs> It's probably that is exactly what's happening, actually. I mean, that's, yeah, that's true. That, that's the thing that if, if AI goes far enough, it's writing things that no one wants to write yes. and no one wants to read. Yes. That's what I, and that's where I feel like it should stop because it's sort of like when you get into stuff like books and podcasts and, yeah. and movies, people actually want to connect with other human beings, not just have the next product regurgitated by this. But the interesting thing about politics is, is that there's always business. Business is always going because people are always caring. There's enough people who care. Yeah. Care about what they think matters or what they think they can control. And that's where you get the masses yeah. and the people who show up at things and, <laughs> and do other things like exercise their democratic right to vote. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. Cause there it's, there's, we got to a place now where there isn't one story anymore. Like it's, it's, you have a uh, different people who are interpreting it their own ways and looking for the hidden meanings and oh, that, totally. that aren't there. 
Oh, you've been on TikTok. Is that, is that, is that what you're saying? Like, like, yeah. Well, have, having worked in TikTok for a while, like there's a whole secret language of TikTokers of, of secret things you can do to increase your views. And it's kind of TikTok. amazing. I mean, like the story. Okay. So that's a great, that's a great little segue. Sure. Uh, here's the deal. When it comes to politics, especially political discussion, and you see all the conspiracy theories, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm, and I'm talking about everything from the little stuff to the big stuff. Yeah. The most of the time, and I, if not all the time, conspiracy theories, there might be a little bit of truth in them, maybe, mm -hmm. but mostly they are, and this is what I think, they are people's storytelling yeah. to convince them of something they can't understand. Yeah. So people look at a situation and go, oh my God, my, I can't wrap my hands around that. Yeah. I can't compute that. It must be because uh -huh. something caused it. Yeah. And it's this crazy story of whatever like happened. And that's what's problematic about the world today is with communicating, but we'll get there, yeah. is that those people who can't understand or don't have the intellect or don't have the, the perspective to know what actually happened, they can get in touch with the other people who are just as scared as they are. Yeah. And they share stories. And then those stories become one great big story. Yeah. And, and so it's, on. It's, and so it's, it's the house of cards. Then you sort of have started yes. by this thing and then you build on it. And then suddenly. And now it's a thing. Yeah. And yeah. And now suddenly you're, you're completely out in this like way, way out. In the and I'm not going to get into specific, like, branch. right? Like, I mean, no, no but but it happens time and again. I mean, this is yes. through history. This is yes. what we had. I mean, how many things have we learned as adults? Right from history that never happened. Like Napoleon wasn't short. Catherine the Great had no real big interest in horses. Like, Did he still put his hand inside his... I don't think so. I thought he had a I stomach ailment or something. I thought, I thought he had a golden hand. Isn't that no, what wait a minute. Did he have like... Well, no, that's those shapeshifters that are on the Secret Service. <laughs> they... <laughs> and I'm kidding. Yeah. But... Well, you know, I always go back to the story. I, I don't know the specifics, I'm sure. But there was a story I think I've read in the past about um, when the printing press first started. Mm -hmm. And there was calamity in Europe where you had this fear of floods. These great floods were going to come. Yeah. And it was because somebody got a hold of a press and started printing out pamphlets that said, the, the great seer has said that the great flood is coming. You all grab your children and dogs and run away. Don't yeah. forget about the cats because nobody yeah. cares about the cats. But <laughs> Cats will take care of themselves. Yes. Oh, they're the ones who started the flood. But uh, <laughs> but I but I will say like, yeah, I mean, like we've been through this before. Like we, we are we're we're going through cycles of mass information, yeah. mass disinformation. And yes, there's going to be calamity. We're going to figure it out. <laughs> I am a positive person. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are storytelling creatures. And yes. so that's, uh, we look for stories everywhere. But as we're talking about stories, let's see if we can make a story. Okay, so, great. Uh, would you, uh, we're going to, I'm going to ask you a series of questions. Okay. And then we're going to roll some dice. So let me get my, my dice chart out here. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to have you roll a six-sided die. Let me get it out of my little dice bag here. Okay, there, got it. Okay, all right. So first thing you're going to do is for a format. So it goes uh, one through six. So uh, book, television, show, audio drama, film, play, or wild card, which is you get to pick. Oh, good. So, so this is where we're going to start. We're gonna, so start that. Two. All right. We are making a television show. Oh, goody. <laughs> now, this could either be a series or it could be a mini series. Yeah, we can do it as we go. Okay. Next thing I have you do, I'm going to have you roll a 20 sided dice. This will pick the genre. Oh, there right, we go. That uh, was not the roll. That was me handing the die over oh, and doing right. a bad job of it. 18. Okay. 18, 18 is uh, using a public domain character. So, any oh. character that is in the public domain. Well. And so we like to do multiple <laughs> genres here. So roll again, and then we'll see what, what else, oh, what like, else comes up. I like where this is going. So we have, okay, tell me. Okay, and it is a ghost story. Oh, okay. So it is okay. So we are making. We're going to come up with a television show. Okay. About a uh, something. Someone in the public domain. So I guess that would be Sherlock Holmes, Tarzan, Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse. Now <laughs> Steve <laughs> Willie, Mickey Mouse. Yeah. Oh, Steve oh. Oh. We can talk about We can use Mickey. We can use Minnie. We can use Pete, but we Pooh? can't use Winnie the Pooh. We can use Winnie the Pooh. We can oh. use Tigger now oh. because Tigger is <laughs> in the middle. So that can do it. And it's a ghost story. Now we can we can stop there and start talking about two, or we can I can break out the story engine and we can come and it'll give us like a character situation like 
No, oh, no, right. let's just do it. Do you want to go from here? Yeah, let's go from okay. here. All right. All right. So what's the first thing that came to your mind then when you public domain character? Was it Mickey Mouse or was it? Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it was Winnie the Pooh. Okay. So a television series, Winnie the Pooh, is, it, is this going to be animated or live action? Oh, <laughs> or, wow. Or a combination? <laughs> Having seen what the early live action views are of Winnie the Pooh, we're not going to do that? <laughs> well, but there was Christopher Robin. Oh, that's true. I'm talking so, about the, the yeah, bloody, blood and honey. Bloody, oh, yeah. Is that what it's called? Yeah, it's called Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey. Oh, we're not going to do that. Yeah, we're not going to do that. No. Animated. We're going to do yeah. animated. Oh, yeah, animated. Okay, so this is yeah. an animated show. Now, is it an animated series like um, the straight for kids, like Mickey Mouse Clubhouse kind of thing, or like the sort of traditional Winnie the Pooh stuff? Or are we going to try and take Winnie the Pooh and do like an Avatar Last Airbender epic quest? So I made an animated yes, series. Yes, like, serious. You know, that's exactly where I'm headed with this. Yes. Okay. Yes, okay. we're going to do that. Now, it's not necessarily going to be mature rated adults it's sure. going to be for like those teens and up. Right. so sort of more anime kind of that middle like that yes sort of action adventure is this wholesome what are you thinking in no terms of- i'm thinking riverdale okay I'm- oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay so like teenage angsty winnie the pooh yes <laughs> okay, riverdale. And Tigger too. yes yes uh, okay so so this is winnie the pooh this is what role does Christopher Robin then play in this? Is he going to be um, like they've they've he's moved on with it? Like they, this is the Andy grown up sort of thing. Oh, you just do I do do I tell the whole story? Well, we can. Yeah. We'll okay. Whatever, that's it. We'll figure it out as we go. So All right. what do you what do you want? So what what I do thought you, of, how are you seeing it? So when you said when I said Winnie the when I thought Winnie the Pooh. Yes. Right. And then you said this is a ghost story. Yes. So ghost, not horror, but no, like, it doesn't have to be. Does okay, yeah. but it's a mystery. It's a oh, ghost. Okay. It's a ghost. Ghost oh. mystery. Ooh, we're getting into this like Scooby Doo territory. So here's what happens. Okay, Pooh wakes up, and he's on the thousand acre wood. Oh, it's ch- it's changed. Yeah, and Christopher Robin. I already think it's because Christopher Robin has left. He's gone off to live okay. his life. He's he's like Andy. Yeah, Andy's going off to college. Right. Christopher Robin has gone off to college. And Pooh, his his final, his fear, his ghosts of his past <laughs> finally wake up with him one night. Okay. And and when he wakes in the morning, he realizes, oh, it's no longer the hundred acre wood, it's the it's the thousand acre wood. He doesn't find a way out. Okay. And he has to, and he has to he finds Tigger, and Tigger and him have lost all their friends, because they're not in the public domain. Sure. I, I don't know if <laughs> and now they have to navigate this this nightmare, but this nightmare is of things from their past, hence the theme of the ghosts. Okay, all right. So, I kind of want to watch this show, <laughs> right? That's that's, that's 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 what's fun about this. Okay, so um, this is is it's just like them dealing with what kind of like threats are we talking about? Is this like is this the existential sort of like like suddenly this nice calm woods where everybody used to play? Oh, right. as kids right. now has become this thing. Is this like fairy tale like? fairies night like you know creatures Ooh. kind of thing or is it like like into the woods sort of metaphors of life i'm getting are... i'm getting a little what dreams may come okay so okay. it's a little bit through a metaphysical world okay so phantom toll booth sort yes of. yes okay. and As wonderland the yes. kind of things don't quite make sense so this may be their this may this just has been induced because christopher robin is gone sure right and, now right. and the, so now it's a, a a dream left unattended exactly and now it's spread out and they're 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 stuck in it. They're stuck in it, and they want to get the they want to get out. Okay, they so want that's, they, that's they have they have a destination. The quest is to get out okay. to escape this because just as Christopher Robin has gone on to the rest of his life, so do Pooh and Tigger. Okay, so do are do you think Pooh and Tigger are aware that Christopher Robin is gone? Like, I think are, they have forgotten. I think the trauma of him leaving was so great okay. that it has manifested in their in their psychological selves uh-huh. that this is this is the journey that they have to go to make the jump to life beyond Christopher Rock. Okay. Wow. So do you see like Winnie the Pooh as like visually, is he more of like a real bear now? Like from the sort of soft rounded things there now that he now that we've sort of gone into sort of a more grown up sort of world is it like a bear and a tiger no on a quest well, or okay. you still think so it is still in like the well no here's the deal it simple is primary color they see themselves as the simple primary color oh. but the twist is when they interact with their environment on the way yeah they are actually a bear and a full-grown tiger <laughs> okay so they're dealing with the one the environmental reaction to them going well, uh you're a bear and a tiger yeah and they're also encountering things from their past so like 
Pooh and Tigger, they both have pasts. Like there's sure. life, like as they were babies or children or what did they grow up with? So it's real world meshed with things of their past that they're trying to get into the ghosts of the past okay. and how they confront those fears to then get to the next stage of living. Okay. So they are trying to escape. Well, they're like, trying to escape because they don't, they perceive something is wrong with their reality. So they perceive okay. that something's wrong. Yeah. And what's wrong is they're now passing into the real world. Everyone around them sees it. They don't. So okay. it's a perspective. It's a journey of perspective. Okay. So is it sort of like the never ending story where there's, there's nothing behind them? Like they, cause you know, Pooh is a, a person who stays home. Like he, you know, he is a, a traditionally a homebody. Right. So like what we, we have to find something to get him sort of out. And like, let's say, I'm not putting everything on you. Like we oh, can, no, no, we can no, work no. on this. Oh, I'm no, not, no, I'm not making, I'm not just forcing you to answer all of these questions. But we need to get him out of his house. Right. And moving on the way. And like, as he is a bear of very little brain, it's going to take something. <laughs> uh, like, well, I guess, what's the inciting incident is what we say in, in the screenwriting world. What is the thing that makes the change that gets him moving that has him to go on a quest? Because, you know, Luke's parents die. Uh, you know, uh, oh, no, right, uh, totally. Hagrid shows up totally. on a flying motorcycle. Like, you need to have something to get them I want to say, I want to, I don't want to go. I say, I say, I say, before, before, the, before the nerd brigade comes at me. Sure. Luke's uh, aunt and uncle. Oh, aunt and uncle. I was going to let that go. <laughs> I wasn't. Was I wasn't even going to get into that. Yes, I'm aware. I'm. A, I, okay. I was. I was. I was going to let you just roll with that. Yeah. Okay. So, I want to say. Well, you could easily the, the the cheap route would be sure. the tree fell over. Okay. Right. But no. Right. We're going to take a little. We're going to take a little nudge from the bee movie. Okay. Oh. The There's going to be something happens to the bees. There's no uh -huh. more honey. Oh, there's no more honey. And yes, now he's got to find, it. now he's got to find the honey. That would do it. And you're also dealing with an affected world because there's no bees. Oh. So oh, now so there's like, a, there's a there's layer. An, there's an ecological layer to this. This might be, this might be a little too much The Walking Dead, <laughs> but no, it won't, it won't. <laughs> but I think that that's what would happen. We, 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 we'd, we'd have a little bit more of a twist to, so he's to trying characters. to get to Atlanta. <laughs> yes. And, and um, the WDC or does whatever. Does Mr. Sanders play a role in this? <laughs> Funny. Okay, so so Jerry um, Seinfeld will guest as a voice of one of the bees that tell no. <laughs> wow! So, wow! So, B well, movie. I didn't realize casting. Movie. Yeah. I, know, I didn't think B movie would be uh, relevant at all. Um, so uh, Tigger shows up at Pooh's house, and the and the the tree is already wrecked. Or oh no, the tree's not wrecked. It's just that Pooh, something's wrong. Uh -huh. what happened? And he's like, "There's no more." There's no more buzzing because this is what Tigger oh, would say. There's no yes. more buzzing. Yeah. He doesn't. He knows there's no. He knows that. Yes. And Pooh's like, oh no, what? Oh no. And there's <laughs> and now 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 there's a calamity. So now we we it, it doesn't just all happen overnight. Yeah. You deal with that incredible dread of well, if there's no bees, there's no honey. Now he's got to get the honey. Yeah. And other people want to get the honey. And and so like maybe the first season is just we have gotta get the honey. Yeah. Eat the honey. No more honey. And now. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of, instead of going after brains, yeah, I know it's honey. For honey. <laughs> and now you've got all these other things that can happen because one, yes, there is the whole journey of gathering the honey. Yeah. There is getting the honey. There are the robbers who come to take the honey. Yeah. And now you're after them because. So are there people like human beings do you see in this world or is it all animals? Like, you know, sort of in Wonderland, you have kind of a mix of, of both things. But I would say traditionally, Wonderland. It's got to be in, fantastic. In Winnie the Pooh, there's yes. only animals and Christopher Robin. I want to say he see, well, again. It goes back to this. He sees them as animals, so yes. his interactions are different than what the reality is. Which is no, they could be a mix of people and animals. Okay, and that so affects the reaction how, that he gets. How are we representing that visually? Like how are how is it that we seeing from his perspective there? Like when someone walks up to them with the quest, the problem, whatever it is, right. What what are we seeing? Are we always seeing through his eyes, or are we you shifting back and forth like different animations? Styles? No, you can shift back and forth. And uh, I'm thinking like uh -huh. Remember oh, the, okay. the, sure. the, yeah. the 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 classic the, music classic video, music take, video on take on me. Yeah. And I'm thinking that occasionally something happens. We got to find out what that thing is. Uh -huh. There's something that happens in conversations where the camera shifts, and it shifts through this sort of like unseen wall where all of a sudden now you're behind the mirror. And you realize that, oh, no, this is actually what's happening. And there's some cool things that can be done with that. As I'm thinking yes. that through, yeah. there it doesn't have to shift. Right. But it could just be perspective 
a change of camera. And there would always be these little hooks of, oh my God, what I thought was happening in the scene. No, it was actually happening because of this. What does that mean? I don't know, yeah. but I know it'd be cool. Yeah. So the Thousand Acre Woods is is a realm in and of itself, just Correct. in terms of stories. So we don't have to worry about like, this is taking place in Colorado. No, or this is taking no, place any, anywhere. In England. It could be anywhere. Like, it, is, it is the woods. Correct. So anything can happen in the woods. Exactly. That will also decrease the, well, I was going to say production, but this is animated. <laughs> well, I mean, if you, so it doesn't matter. You, you it's know, much get simpler. A, get a couple, you know, just you know, some AI generated trees and you're good to go. You right? can make That's, this exist anywhere. <laughs> the the, the uh, Asia Pacific version will be very different than, <laughs> That's right. than the North are American they, version. Are they redwoods? Are yes. They palm trees? We're going to be able to fix they, all yeah. that. That's all going to get fixed. <laughs> All going to get fixed in AI, out the character. AI post. Everything will be taken care of. Okay, so then uh, I guess then who are the new people? Like, so we uh, we have uh, Pooh and Tigger are okay. our main characters. Yes. Um, I guess is there? Will there be villains? Will there be? Or the, is it is it is it bear versus nature? Like, is that the the thing? Or do you think we should actually have, you know, a, a direct? Like there is something an evil badger, whatever it is. There's some kind of well. I think there's got to be something. Beyond the books, yes. So a, a character that we create essentially, a new nemesis for Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. Wow. An I, even bigger, even dumber bear. Right, swiper. <laughs> just for <bring> swiper. In. <laughs> let's just let's just there's, there's a swiper. We need a fox. Of some yes. Fox is pretty good. Like fox, we could do the tr- the trickster thing of like. He is an intelligent character where these two are not known for their brain power. So it could very a swiper type is actually pretty good because then they could be like sort of running around and you know running games on to get the tenure. honey to get the honey. Yeah, or, Cause, or cause remember, to, there's still that search. That if you're do, or you do the the Br'er Rabbit thing of trying to so this fox is getting Pooh and Tigger to do all the work. To do all, to go through all of the thing, it was sort of the, it, it come across as the, the mystical guru sort of like giving them guidance and actually in the next it's there just to can we put make them on it, a path and steal it. Okay. Can we make it like a, a Michael Landon and Victor French? <laughs> Dynamic, deep, deep cut. So, deep so, cut. And if, I, I, I really, I don't know where this is coming from. This yeah. is just where this conversation no, is going. Absolutely. So, we're gonna make this a little highway to heaven. Okay. Where as they're right. out on this journey to get the honey, and by the way, there's also the fox that's trying to take the honey. Yeah. We don't even know yet what the reality is of the fox. Yeah. But they happen to meet other people, and every episode oh. there's a need, and they help the person with that's that need. That's really good. That's really good to have it be that they're on their quest room too, but they are the kind, helpful ones in a unkind, unhelpful world. Correct. So they show up as opposed to the the man with no name or whatever. Like when they roll into town, they leave the town better yes. than when they left it. Correct. That's really good because that gives us a lot of story engine to go as we go from place to place. And, and each season. Like, hey, why is everybody being so mean to each other? Like, can we just be nice to each other? You know, you, you have that and the cliffhangers for each season are is when they are in need. And yeah. then, and then every season, some of those people they helped along the way come and help them out yeah. in the <laughs> in the season premiere. Of, <laughs> wow, I really okay. So okay, and then I, uh, how you know in a in a traditional animated thing like your Ducktales or whatever mm-hmm. that's usually like a twenty two episode thing, but in more modern prestige animated stuff like Over the Garden Wall, oh, you're right. like six eight kind of episodes. Are you thinking smaller arcs? Oh, Are you thinking? Yeah. Episode by episode, are you thinking like a larger? Or you, I, I don't what have. Is your, what is your vision? The attention span is not there anymore. You couldn't. You could not do a twenty-four episode. No, this is more like of a modern. Each, 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 a chapter, or do you think it's every episode is self-contained, but they're still moving in a direction? Every episode is self-contained. They're okay. moving in a direction, but this is no more than six to eight episodes. Okay, per, per season. season. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because you wouldn't. Because right. here's the deal. This because I hate to say it. Of all, what you really want is you want. It's almost like We Bear Bears. Okay. Right? We Bear Bears usually yeah. was in like, do what, two or three episodes per chunk. Yeah. And those only ran maybe six to 12 minutes. Why? Well, I hope right. I'm remembering We Bear Bears correctly. Well, uh, I mean, I mean, a Bluey episode is about eight minutes. There we go. There we go. You watch three of those, there's right. 24 minutes. Right. So that's, that would consider, that's what used to be like right. an episode of Flintstones right. was 24 minutes or whatever. That was a traditional sitcom. And if you format. watched eight or nine of those, yeah. that's a movie. Right. So there you go. Right. Okay, so you're seeing as uh, individual episodes 
uh, pro- problem solved at the end of it. Yeah, uh, sort of your, your sitcom, everybody hugging and learning, you sure. know, but still, it's a, but also there's a little bit of supernatural because oh, yeah. these, it's two, you know, two bros going right. from town to town, you know, cleaning up whatever mess it is and then getting in there, whatever their version of the Impala is and driving along. Okay, wait, and I got to bring back what's the ghost theme? The ghost theme is okay. part of helping the people yes. is helping someone in that group they help in each episode yeah. with a ghost of their past. Okay. Oh, so there is something the ghost, that, uh, or is it actually like a real Okay, no, ghost? it's not Scooby. It's not Can it, no. Tigger see ghosts. That's uh, the question. Wow. <laughs> right? That could open up a whole thing of like them literally like helping the dead. <laughs> I mean, it can, it's it, I they say this this could be an avenue that we don't want to pursue, but you know, as we're talking about it, like could it be that you know, Tigger is oh, a medium between the worlds. that's interesting. And, you know, they go to a, a town of whatever, rabbits, I guess, well, maybe not rabbits, because rabbit is, I don't know where he ends the copyright thing, but a, a town of voles. Yeah. Because nobody uses voles in animation, because they're, they're not the most attractive animals. Um, sorry, sorry for the... the yeah, vole. sorry about that. Sorry to the vole of aficionados out there. Please okay. don't send me the hate mail. Uh, maybe I'm not sure on that yet. Okay, because because maybe the I ghost like your metaphorical ghost. I'm yeah, just, I like I the metaphor. Yeah, but because I also do like a good ghost story. Because because again, what's the ultimate? Like, okay, I think shows like this today, you not only would you want to have it be funny sure. and have mm-hmm. an interesting story and yeah. a story that connects, so that you can get invested. Yes, so that you would want to get to a certain yeah. place. You, I think you want, especially with Winnie the Pooh, as opposed to what they did in Blood and Honey, right? I would want there to be much more of an emotional thing where I want people to like. Who and Tigger. Correct. You know, like Correct. I sort of want them to emotionally connect to them, even if they're not. Right? And not in the same way as like, oh, silly old bear, but Correct. to like follow along. On, like in the way that they follow Aang in Last Airbender. Totally. Of, like a, a nice person trying to do a nice thing in a world that does not support that kind of feeling. Oh, okay, the show that... That Tigger word is, is, is a tough world. The template for that is ghosts. Yes. But, Very but much mobile. along that line. Yes. yes. Correct. But Correct. that same... Yeah, yeah, you're right. Right. Yeah. There's so yeah the the idea of them coming in and having the people stuck in whatever is that it? You're like, <laughs> oh yeah, I love the idea of Pooh and Tigger being the agents of change. Yes, <laughs> that they come to a thing and people are stuck in their feelings, their whatever situation, whatever it is, and it's Winnie the Pooh and Tigger who get them out of this and unstuck and yes. moving in a direction. Wow. That. <laughs> <laughs> the, n- <laughs> historically unchanging characters <laughs> and we're going to make them be the thing that changes the lives better for all they're the ones them. who let wow. go they let go first yeah. so that others can let go oh wow they- <laughs> the idea of i mean that's, it, it, that's too far, but bad. the idea of like imaginary like the imaginary friends are sort of back in the thing after you know like after yeah. i think there's a movie coming out called if about imaginary friends there's flashes over imaginary friends the idea of like imaginary friends going off of their own to like help oh yeah is great oh it's great. yeah like not even everything you see was always was always like based out of somewhere but having it be that they're on a mission of goodwill <gasps> oh that's really good that gets into some really nice stuff especially Nice people in an, in an unkind world. I really like that because we don't see a lot of things like that. I said, as, as I've been, I've been watching a lot of shows where it's a uh, person solving crimes is like they're just a little bit damaged, just a little bit off, oh, thing, right, you know, right. or something, you know. But but because they're helping solve a murder, you sort of put up with all of their nonsense. Like the idea of someone being nice, yeah, and that's their power. That's really good, and like, and not very often. Depicted, and you could still you could still see a character character arc for either one. Yes, where they do get a little cyn- cynical from it from yeah. the journey because yeah. the journey's hard. Sure, and that's where they help each other out. There's that whole other subplot of no, they're there to to you know encourage each other. Right, oh. yeah, right. So they uh, so they are they following the clues of a mystery of like where the honey went. Like is that sort of their like. Well, you know, sort of why is it the why do they come to a town? Why do they leave? What is it? Is is it do you think there's like every season is sort of like getting a central mystery of that kind of thing, or you think it literally is just wandering from place to place? I was gonna say that uh one morning Pooh woke up and realized he had a map to where all the honey was <laughs> on his back. <laughs> 
And no, no I'm kidding. <laughs> it's, 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 the, it's the skin of Eeyore. <laughs> that's all that's left. Can no, you imagine? Yeah, the, the, can you? It wasn't even into the dark version. I was like, I'm not interested in the well, dark version thinking, well, of, of friendly characters. Well, I was thinking, and well, Mickey Mouse can show up in this. But wait, like, really, Mickey Mouse can bring, show up. Bring Dennis Hopper's character in from Waterworld <laughs> as like the fox, and he's got like this like oh, honey tanker, okay. and he's like, and he's got like, okay. this, he's got what? this weird like. What? Steampunk sort of like. Do we know of any other animals that that traditionally like honey besides bears? Like who else do like well, anteaters? Or I mean, I feel like there are other ants. Don't ants like? I guess sugar. ants. Do. Yeah, ants like. I'm trying to think if there's some other like that we could have like as a rival. <laughs> <laughs> Someone else who's after that, you're like it's a it's a national treasure, and like who's the who's the Sean Bean to <laughs> to Winnie the Pooh's thing? It's another another bear. Like I, I don't want to have it be. I really did. Know, okay, another. wait. For some reason, I really just went. I went all in down my head into Waterworld, and like okay. they go to the atoll, and there's like you know <laughs> there, some... there could be there could be something they could. Oh, you know, if they found like a pamphlet from a artisanal honey you know like commune you know, like like a oh my god you know like a, a yes. bee sanctuary yes and that's they find that and they but but at the start we don't know that's what it is it's just he thinks it's a map but it turns out it's actually a brochure for this bee sanctuary and that's the end of season one it's, it's the like part of the brochure with there. the map that was ripped out and, yes. and it, so they it gets there tattered. and then they find one that's complete and go oh and then it turns out that's what it is it's a bee sanctuary and it's sort of like oh this isn't what we thought it was going to be and so they that's their their that that's their uh, um, big stone foot in the jungle from Lost. <laughs> I'm like, oh, but this opens up a bigger question. I'm like, who built this and why? And this, what is you know? So then that season two is then investigating. So then season two becomes Walking Dead season two <laughs> on the farm. <laughs> The sanctuary. <laughs> we can't afford to have you water any place, place. We need central locations so we can use the background. Oh, no, it's animation. We can no. do whatever. Yeah, no, yeah. no, no, that's cool. Yeah. That's pretty funny. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Yeah, right. I, I like that idea. Though. I love having the, the yeah, having literally following the map and going like it's, and each people, person along the way then I telling them, oh, yeah, this part is actually, I know where that is, you know, and then. Oh, my God, I love that. For that. Because it's literally the map that they printed on yes, to yes. someone to drive to. The yes. thing, but But they don't understand that. And it's long ago. So is, which opens the question that now maybe I, I said too much. Is this post-apocalyptic? <laughs> no. Well, well, though, or is it just a fantasy world? Like I, I say, oh no, it's a fantasy world, but it's a fantasy world that doesn't just because the bees are gone, which I know, yeah. apocalypse, but it's not oh, sure. Yeah, but yeah, well, no, we, we find we something to stop them out. Yeah, yeah, we can still. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this won't. Is the room right? Everything pee. doesn't have to end in flames. No. Like no. no. The, 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 life doesn't always end in Mad Max Fury Road. Sometimes it ends in Star Trek. Yeah. Right? The, the, there, there are multiple paths. Is there a way to still get pollinate things? We figured out a way to pollinate things. <laughs> well, That's okay. Well, I see. If we you get can into, still eat. So if we get into who set this up, then it could be another animal. Or ants. I mean, ants is not, not a bad thing because they're organized. Like, yeah. Uh, so you could have that the bees are, I guess, are bees intelligent in this world? In oh. the Thousand Acre Woods? Or are they bugs? I mean, we can't have a pecking order in terms no, of... Like, no, 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 like I see what you're saying. Animals are the highest intelligence, and it doesn't go because there, because there are no people. So some animal or animal group is running this. So are the bees prisoners? Yeah. And is Winnie the Pooh going to free them? Or is it they're just bees, they're, they're cats? Well, maybe, that's the, maybe that's the secret journey that he doesn't realize. You know what I'm saying? Like, like maybe like that's, he finds out along the way when that perspective shift happens. Yeah. Perspective shift happens. Oh no, this is actually what your quest has been all along. You didn't know it. Yeah. Yes. Well, actually that, that, that does tie into all the thematic stuff of you assumed that these bees were idiots and you could, because you can communicate with them. But now that you can, you realize you've been wrong about them this whole time. You've been be prejudiced. Yeah. Well, I know I'm saying like it, he assumed no, that, don't. you know, Winnie the Pooh being Winnie the Pooh and Tigger too, uh, assumed that they were the only intelligent thing in this, you know, like the animals. Well, and, and, and look at, and look and at how then, much he took honey for granted. 
He right. just saw it as right. a thing exactly. to consume yeah. in quantities. Yes. Now it's something it's, it's something more valuable and something more different yeah. and something he has more reverence for. That, as the B movie taught us, <laughs> yes, it's really hard to make honey. Yes, and so these these workers have been working on this stuff, and you just come in and take all of their hard earned stuff away from them, and you need to understand the means of production. <laughs> you need to. Uh, Winnie the Pooh is about to learn about the proletariat. Oh my god! <laughs> Maybe. I know it's it's a what it's one version. No, but no, the idea that that you don't think about where stuff comes from. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's like like you, you think about eating a, a a candy bar, but you don't think about what it takes to pick a cacao bean. Well, and that's the bigger and that's the or bar. or you wear a shirt and you don't think about how hard it is to get cotton off right, of a cotton. Right, right, right. Well, even to make stuff, but it's also it's it's the it's the. Uh, the community it's yeah, it's right. everyone so like when he's going in they're going in and helping people with their stuff and what holds back a community well when they're when they're held to the past when they're yeah. when they're incarcerated by that by old ways of thinking yes and now this is the the freedom that comes from that All right. well then who are the people who are imprisoning the bees and keeping them who are the, what are the animals i guess i would like to go a non-traditional way because you sort of have your wolves and your weasels right. that are traditionally there. It would be interesting to have it something else that's not normally like an animal that you think of as being troublemaker. You know, so, or or, or uh, I guess in this one, we're going for these would be like controlling. Like this is somebody who has like, this is my factory where I'm keeping these bi- these bees working all the time. Right. And it's a, you know, it's a area of land that has been gridded off and fences and you know all of these kind of things that right, to, right, to right. keep the and domed or something you know, you know whatever if it depends how technological we want to get is this is it wicker i mean like is it you know every, i mean let's say are there cars in this you know like that sort of thing is it is this all agrarian is it is it sort of fantasy based like you know uh they're hooking up carts to Dumb is this the problem? Thing, let, me ask, let me ask you a little question. Is sure. this the problem that a lot of shows and movies have? Is that we've we've we put together kind of a story that I would actually like want to watch. Yeah, yeah. You're you're trying to get me to stick the landing. And I'm yeah, kinda yeah. and I'm kinda like I don't want I don't want to take you into anywhere where you don't want to go, but at the same time you had originally said that it was like a three episode a three series, you know, three seasons. I know uh, yeah, it could be, yeah. I don't have an ending. Right. Well, I mean, so do you have an ending in mind? I mean, no. I, as, if, if we're going to be smart television makers, then we go down the SpongeBob route. Because where it never ends. And where it never ends. I mean, South that's Park, the, we're always in fourth grade. Exactly. Simpsons, you know, like that's yeah, like, right. you know, poor Bart Simpson is never going to get to high school. He's, he's locked in perpetual hell. <laughs> Sorry, that's a different conversation. But yeah, that's, that's yeah, the, so like the the smart money is you build a like the, the that story engine of like you fall in love with these characters and they and what they do and like Highway to Heaven, which ran for seven years, eight years. I mean, Thanks. like for, I mean, Touch by an Angel ran for how? I mean, it's just Ghost Whisperer, right? Like, exactly. Oh, yeah, yes. you know? And so that's the thing. It's like you know, Lost had a beginning, middle, and end, but like. You know, as far as we had know, a beginning and a middle. <laughs> I mean, let's oh, not. It, oh, it ended. <laughs> now, see, I don't have an issue with that. That's a whole other thing. It had a beginning it, and a middle. No, I think uh, it did end. Like whether you uh, how yes. you feel about it, yes. it had an ending. Um, but that the you know for animated like Futurama doesn't. I mean, has had three endings now at this point, and they keep on going. So the, I mean, that's that's the, that, that's all. I'm, all I'm saying is and that should take you one way or the other. Right. But because there are, it's just different philosophies. So like, do you want to have it be that we build this thing and then we can tell as many stories as we want until we're done telling stories and then and then they, no. and, they and they walk and then they meet Christopher Robin who is God. No, no, <laughs> and no. The, and that's the end. No, I don't want that. I, but, but here's or, the, or it's or it's that that we basically are taking them into they get to the end where they realize that like. Uh, friendship was the real treasure, you know, like, well, well, no, like no, no, a no. final, a final no. thing. So that, that's all. That's all I'm asking. You so they I'm have, ask you to right. commit to. Oh, I will. No, no, no. I, I know, worked it out. Winnie, Pooh and Tigger sitting in a church. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> Going to the light. Just <laughs> right. walking to the yeah, light. Exactly. Or, or you know, Sam Beckett never returned. No, home. Like, no. Not, I mean, no. I, that's all. That's all I say. So before you, they, you can, okay. you can sort of. What, what is your gut telling? You, so you know, my gut is telling me that it actually has a definitive end. 
this is a story that is told because th- because here's the deal what they're what they're ultimately doing and this here's here's the ending I would think in my head is okay this is a phase of their life yes this grief this loss this is the phase of life that they're going to get through but they're going to help people along the way right the ending is they're at peace with it and now they get to move on to their next phase of life just like Christopher Robin did which we've alluded to where right. that actually fits in at the end I'm not sure yes. But the, what I would love to see is is where the enemy, the villain, mm-hmm. that keeps either coming back to either take the honey, hoard the honey, cause the bees to go away or whatever else. Here's the funny part is that it's a duality. Mm-hmm. One, that that antagonism is actually what created the phenomenal journey that they've just been on. So Ooh, there is this okay. there is this understanding that, wow, I, we actually got through our grief. We got through this phase of life. Because it was hard and because of the people who made it hard. And then on a flip side, yeah. the people who were doing it, the villain, whether it's the villain. I mean, I'm trying to think like, well, they want to control the honey. OK, sure. Well, yeah, I was thinking that's that's our sort of our season two villain. But right. We can have an overall. Oh, no, I, th- I think, you know, yeah, that, that and, might, and might it all change when the Fire Nation attacks. Sure. Like, it could be that there is something, over, you know, an overarching something or or a. Uh, Peter and the Wolf, like sure. it's the dark shadow. It's something is out there. It's not even that they're not. It's not the fugitive. Yeah, but I, but I want. But so, but so not running from something. No, no, but no, no, it right. could be that there's something out there, and it turns out that whatever this thing was was the 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 inciting incident. Like you know, was caused by a thing, a no, being, no, a, a thing. creature, a whatever right, right. It is. But I want that thing. To then have the realization, like they have the realization that wow, this was hard. Yeah. But hey, thanks. Yeah. Thanks for the for making it hard. Right. Because we actually were able to deal with the thing we we had to deal with and help all these people along the way. Yeah. And the villain goes, Wow, I didn't even realize this was putting you through this. Yeah. And the thing that I thought I was accomplishing, it didn't matter. <laughs> there is a And so the whole take is the whole take is this. The hard journey yeah. is always preferable so the point okay. the point of the show the full arc of the show is yeah. yeah i think the hard things are good yes because i will i will i, I like rough. that i would take that and i, I want to add another thing sure. onto it because it's a trope that has uh, that shows always allude to and then never follow through on and that is the final episode like the two-part finale is that that final confrontation that like whatever it is that that I think, but everyone they've helped along the way shows up to help them in the last thing. Their good deeds, which they did not plan, their good deeds pay off in that in a way they had never expected. So, like even so, you know, having this out that we right. have, you know, we have, um, you know. Uh, 18 episodes or whatever, you know, that how many people are going to help, like, let's say 18 people mm-hmm. or whatever, too, that when they get to the last thing, instead of like, I don't know how we're going to defeat this, like, oh, well, we help the person who makes bridges so he can make a Brit. And then, and like, all of a sudden, it's that people, it's the end of Spider Man 2. All the dots connect. All the dots connect, exactly, in a way that yes. they had never expected. And they were not asking for, they were not doing it. Yes. And all of a sudden, all those people are in the right place. Yes. To help them yes. do this impossible task, and the impossible task becomes possible because they worked together. And you know who the final person is? Who the villain? Oh, the final person. Because that they, the final, they because help. the twist, the twist in the end is. Yeah. It it needed one more person for this to happen. Whatever the, you know, yeah. thing, them escaping, them them, yeah. them making it to the next step, and the the villain that you've been seeing this whole time is ultimately the eighteenth person. Yeah. It, it's yeah. poetry. It rhymes. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, that's, it's the, it's the, you know, the, the start, the starting and the ending note. Like, you, yes. like the, and then you get to the end and like they, they win, but they still yeah. continue on. Yeah. Like it's, it's, you know, it's Jake and Finn. It's, yeah. you know, it's they, they can like, they, we, they, this, 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 the uh, opera has concluded or whatever too, but like the characters still continue on They're you know, they're still out there. I don't know if I can ever look at Pooh and Tigger the same way again. Right? They, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, right, we're we're going to take them on a journey. Is, like, like, the, boy, yes, they're gonna, they're they're gonna they're gonna be. We're all gonna be changed by the end of it. What I would, what I in my head, this is funny as I just said that. What I'm almost envisioning in my head is it's Pooh and Tigger, but what who I'm actually wishing would take this journey yeah. is Calvin and Hobbes. Yeah, that's that's. 
boy, bringing that Calvin Hobbes energy into it. Yes. Yeah. The, uh, like, Wouldn't that be funny if that's be. the final twist? <laughs> <laughs> the, the perspective changes and it's yeah. Calvin Hobbes. <laughs> It's been Calvin Hobbes. What just happened here? Red shirt, tiger, I mean, it all tracks. Transmogrifier, that was a transmogrifier. You didn't know you were on Paul Paul Watterson, we have a pitch for him. Okay, so I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you a a difficult question, then I'm going to ask you an impossible question as we wrap up. Okay. The difficult question. Yes. Who are the voice actors that you would cast for Pooh and Tigger? We didn't really solidify anybody else. So like, we, okay. But so like, I you, don't. Who you hear? Well, now in my head, and I got to tell you this: it Tigger doesn't have to sound like. Well, first of all, can't. Yeah. Right. Well, I Jim mean, Cummings is is both of them no, at this point. Right. So I mean, but I mean, like, but I don't, I don't, I don't expect it to be like, oh, you oh, know, like I sure. don't. No, it doesn't have to be that. Right. Oh wow. Yeah. I mean, it, it can. You can go actor. You I can hadn't go, thought about that. I know. So <laughs> uh, that's a difficult question. Wait, the, the impossible question is coming. Uh, what well, so the world? Let's let's do this one. So. Though it can be any regular actor, like you can go, you know, uh, say a person who I think is a would be a really good Tigger. I'm going to wait for you to not drink because this might make you a spit take. Who is actually a really good voice actor? My pick for Tigger would be Nicolas Cage. Oh, he oh. is amazing in the Crudes. As yeah. a voice actor. I mean, like, I mean, he's Nicholas Cage. He's Nicholas Cage, but like, he is a really good voice actor. There are a lot of celebrities who do voices that uh, not that great. Can I? Can I? Can I pull a lay miz on you? Sure. He should be poop. Oh, okay. Why? Because he's got that. Yeah, he's he he would. He, I want poo to be like. Oh, I'm. Uh, yeah, we're gonna do this. Like the hope, hopelessly optimistic yeah. person with. A vulnerability that is like, oh, but uh, I'm gonna get let down again. Like, I kind of want that. Okay, wait. So I, 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 for some reason, when you said it, I'm thinking, I'm thinking how the Nicholas Cage can nail that. But let's see. Like, who's who's your who? Who? who I, I, I have, I'm, I'm trying. I'm, I'm taking a pause here because I'm trying to remember what his name is because it's. Uh, oh, I got it. Um, so my pick for. Like it, it, my so like my pairing so like if I if I was doing Nick Cage as Tigger, my poo would be Tim Blake Nelson. Oh, I just watched uh, Oh Brother Where Art Thou again. Yes, and also obviously we know him very well from our time at the Marvel Movie Minute. Yes, um, fantastic actor, great voice, and I think he has that sort of like that kind of, I, I, I don't want to say this as a derogatory thing, lovable idiot, he is in his wheelhouse, that he can he can talk in a way that, is that because like, if you watch him on Watchmen, well, wait, you're and the idea, the same guy's there, like, he is the way the Pooh, like, a sweet, good nature, but he's not an idiot. But that would, I, so that would, I, so that, I could see him as Tigger. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yes. Okay. All right. I think that would actually work because, because for Pooh, there is a vulnerability. There yeah. is, there is where Pooh, Pooh's vulnerability that we already know is in the character, yes. right? But here, it's actually, it's confronted, so yeah. to speak. Tigger, his sort of aloofness is, is, is confronted as well, where he can't, he realizes, I can't just go, oh, you know, yeah. it's got to be more than that. So I am. I'm going to lay you. And when I say lay okay. you, you know yeah, what I yeah. mean. I know you're talking about yeah, 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 yeah. switching the yeah. Russell Crowe and Sasha Baron Cohen yeah. reverse perfect yeah. movie. Uh, <laughs> perfect movie. It's good, but it could have been perfect. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Nobody else comes to mind. You, you like you like the, no. you like both those names. I if I if I marinated with this a little oh, bit more, sure, yeah. probably could this but like the, in the moment. But I got to tell you, those are good. Yeah. I'm very happy with those. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll put out the offer. We'll see right. what they say. Okay, we'll you know. See, you know. Give us a week. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. We'll see. You know. And then, and then we'll leave a message on Bill Murray's answering machine. And oh see my what god. Yes. Uh, okay. So now the impossible question. Here it is. What is the title? I was. I already was thinking that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I was like, titles going to be okay. really, really difficult. All right. So. Um, okay. So I'll give you the layup. Okay. The easy ahead. version of this is Pooh and Tigger. Colon across the thousand acre woods. Well, sure. That's your like right. sort of the, the project they that like you know untitled right. poo project. That's what the sure. they said. So can can we do better than that? So I and my first thought was even when right at the very beginning I was like, well, a thousand acres. 
thousand acres, pretty thousand, thousand, thousand acres, thousand acres is pretty good. I mean, because yeah. that's it. I yeah. mean, it's the or, journey. Or a thousand acre wood because then it that it automatically triggers a little bit of Winnie the Pooh. There we go. Okay, thousand acre wood. Yeah, you you immediately know it's a journey. Yes, right. And you have the you perfect idea. You have the connection with Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, and and it's not at the end of the day. What you're going to find out is it's a lot. It's a lot about a lot more than Winnie the Pooh. Yes, and Tigger. Right. It is about all of these other people yes. and all of and these fears and all of this past and helping. Yes, and and that the easy path isn't always that. And that's that even could be a recurring thing of like they continually don't take the easy path. Correct. And the and path the is end, the path is the most important part. Yeah, the thousand acre wood. Uh, on this this week on the thousand acre wood. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. I kind of like that. All right. All right. So there you go. So there you go, listeners. So if you like the idea, then it is now yours. We are releasing the Thousand Acre Woods as Creative Commons attribution. Um, take it, run with it, write it, whatever you want. All we ask is that you link it back so we can read the version of the story. If you want to do a drawing, whatever it is, the idea is yours. Go forth. Have a good time. Can we so, be at least, can we at least be characters? Like, that'd be great. That's it. Can we do voices in it? Just like, just do like, you know, like the Musker and Clements from, uh, yeah. as, as the characters go by that we yeah. can just be like, another suitor for the princess. <laughs> like, you know, we want to test that, you know, the no school like the old school. No, I haven't seen any bees. <laughs> What's your name? Pooh, get out of here. <laughs> of course, you're going to be an old curmudgeon. That's, oh, the, oh my God, of course. <laughs> Of course. All right, well, so thank you for joining me uh, on the table. <laughs> thank you. Well, the stories won't write themselves, so back into the world we must go. Thank you for stopping by. If you're in this part of the world again, there will always be a seat for you at the table here at the Story Well. Right on, right away.